Here are 10 tricks that you need to know to make buyers fall in love. As a home staging professional, you have an eye for design, you understand color, and you understand style. Your goal as a stager is to make potential buyers fall in love with properties that you stage. And there are some secrets behind that, and we're gonna explain those to you today. So let's talk about the foyer. We've talked about this before. The foyer is a big deal. When buyers walk in the door, you have, what is it, like three seconds or five seconds, they say, to literally capture the uh, looker's attention mm -hmm. and make them fall in love with the property. You want them to have a really big impact moment yeah, right from the start. Yeah, and you want to think of all of your surfaces, right? You want to think of the floor, you want to think of the walls, you want to think of everything that they're going to uh, observe the minute they walk into the home. So, you know, a colorful or beautifully textured entryway rug is a great place to start. Um, of course, a, a foyer table and a nice, yeah. a nice piece of furniture, good quality, right? Right, some beautiful art over top of that mm -hmm. table or a mirror. You wanna create feelings of warmth, feelings of coziness, mm -hmm. and, and just general beauty, you know? Things that really resonate um, with people. So a lamp on a foyer table mm -hmm. creates a lot of like nice warm lighting mm -hmm. that feels cozy. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we use baskets um, yeah. and, uh, for, you know, shoes and blankets, just things to create layers and, and textures. But mm -hmm. the, I think the point here is there's a big moment right inside the front door and you don't want to miss it. Exactly. So another way that you can grab your buyer's attention is by using symmetry in your design. Right, and symmetry doesn't necessarily mean doing the exact same thing. Right. It means, what we're talking about really is creating some balance. Mm -hmm. So you can use same things. Um, for example, you might use um, similar pillows on either end of a sofa, right. or you might use matching chairs to flank a fireplace. Yeah but you don't have to do that. You could use um, different pieces that are similar in scale. Mm -hmm. The thought is that you're creating, um, visually you're creating a sense of calm mm -hmm. and, um, oh gosh, what is the word? What happens when people see it symmetry? Cre it creates a, a balance in their mind and it also mm -hmm. helps them to envision their own pieces in the space. Yeah. Um, you can create symmetry and balance also by doing groupings. So you're talking like small, medium, large when you're doing your accessories. Having some height uh, can also add some visual interest into the space. For example, we've got this fern behind us here. You can see that it's tall, it brings your eye up and it brings your attention to the height of the mirror. These are things that we do, they're sort of like tricks that we do to um, create a cohesive and an interesting space to, to pique your buyer's interest when they walk into the house. Yeah, and it's subconscious, really. Right. Uh, a person walks in and they don't think, wow, the stagers did a great job creating symmetry. Right. They feel it. They don't even know what they're experiencing, but they, ha they, they feel that sense of, of calm and balance, mm -hmm. and, and that's really pleasing. Yes, and so other ways that you can do this is like matching lamps, right? Like even mm. if your end tables don't match perfectly, if they're the same height and you use matching lamps, again, you can create that symmetry. Yeah. You can create that balanced effect. And honestly, using symmetry makes staging a whole lot easier. Mm. Uh, you know, you when you're picking out your inventory, you know you're doing you need six pillows because you have the sofa and two chairs in a room, then you get you know, matching pillows, it makes it a whole lot easier to pack those bins and to get in there, get the staging job set up, get the fix, the, the photos done and be out of there. Right. Um, if you're not like, you know, struggling with, well, I've got this pillow and it has good scale, but it's not the right pattern and the colors don't match and da da it's just easier to do matchy matchy and throw them down and, and be done with the job. Yeah, it so, does make it a lot easier. Yeah, saves a lot of time. Right. Another really important thing when you're looking at how to make buyers fall in love with staged properties, the place has got to be clean. Spotless. Really clean. Really clean. Cleaner. <laughs> so clean. Cleaner than it's ever been in its entire life. And it can't look lived in. Like it has to be truly spotless because yeah. people get hung up on that and they start looking for flaws. Yeah. So it's another thing, and that happens at a subconscious level too. Right. I mean, it's one thing when you can visibly see dirt yeah. or 
it, it grosses it grosses people out yeah. and they tend to hyper focus on the dirtiness and instead the of yeah the negative aspects mm -hmm. of the house yeah um but it's not just a visual uh dirt um subconsciously if there's a you know if there's a bad odor, odor in the space yes. or if it's it feels musty mm -hmm. um people can't necessarily even articulate that but yes. they, something feels off to them yes and it's it's really impactful and, and not in a good way right yeah <laughs> it's going to affect their overall experience in the home and again you have just a few seconds when when someone walks into the door to grab their attention and and you know make the sale by by helping them you know emotionally move into this house and you know we don't encourage you to use you know things that you plug into the wall and these artificial smells and things like that the the truest best way to convey good smells and a good experience is by making the house absolutely spotless and as home stagers we are not responsible for cleaning these homes, but we are responsible for having these difficult conversations mm. with the homeowners. And yeah. there are a couple of ways that you can go about that, right? You could, you know, during your consultation, you could address these cleanliness issues and you can find a way to articulate that in a very polite way. Um, we have also created tools that make this very easy for stagers. It's our four-part consultation checklist. And literally, it's a document that you download. And on that checklist, it includes a cleaning guide that you print off and you hand to the homeowner. So when you finish your consultation, mm -hmm. you literally hand them, here's, your, here's the cleaning guide. This is going to help you get your house ready for the market. And if the homeowner is not in the condition that they can do it themselves, the consultation checklist also includes a list of vetted vendors who you recommend, who you trust, who are insured, and who you don't mind associating your reputation with that you can hand to the client. And it includes the name and contact information of trusted housekeepers. Yeah. So it makes it really easy for you, it right? It does, it does. And you know, I think my favorite thing about our consultation checklist is the, um, the scripting that we've done for mm -hmm. stagers, because um, honestly, this is a this is a sensitive subject. Mm -hmm. You're going into somebody's home as a stager, and now you have to have a sometimes uh, uncomfortable conversation about yeah. the cleanliness of their home. Yeah. Um, that can be hard to do, and you got to handle it really, really well. Mm -hmm. And you have to be mindful of you know how it's impacting them. Um, so we've created entire scripts so that you don't have to guess about how to how to handle that situation. Mm -hmm. We've written out exactly how to approach the client, how to have the conversation, yeah. and how to keep it feeling like a really great beneficial experience for everybody involved. Absolutely. Yeah. And guys, that um, more information about our four-part consultation checklist is in the link below. So click on the link if you would like to get some more information about that. So let's move on. What's the next item in our top 10? Let's check the list. We have it written down here. <laughs> <laughs> so another way that you can make a buyer fall in love with a property is by creating lifestyle spaces, right? We mm -hmm. talk about this all the time. You want to convey a lifestyle. You want to you want to send the message to the buyer that this home is the the level of, you know, of luxury and status that they are looking for. And um, we can do that by doing vignettes in strategically placed parts of the house. Yeah. So first of all, think about who is potentially buying this house. Is it a retirement community on a golf course? That's gonna, you know, appeal to probably an older retired age group. Mm -hmm. Or is it a young neighborhood with a great school nearby? Mm -hmm. um, think about lifestyle zones for families and small children. Right. right. Um, yeah. What are some specific zones so, that we like to create? Okay. Let's talk about a golf course community. Okay. If you've got a home with a golf course, you know, view, then yeah. that's what people are there for, right? They're mm -hmm. there for that country club lifestyle. And the way that you can accentuate that asset for that home is by really dressing up the screened in porch. Yeah. You know, that view is something that's really going to sell the house to, to potential buyers. So, you know, put some extra effort, put some extra greenery out there, put a nice set, you know, a, a, like a, an outdoor living room set yeah. out there with some colorful, fo mm -hmm. uh, colorful pillows and rugs. 
so that when they come into the house and they see that space, it draws their eye to that area of the house and then subsequently to the view behind it. Yeah. You want to give them ideas for how they can live in the space. And if, if ever it's important um, to really be able to use your home in a multitude of ways, this is an opportunity to show that, right? Yeah. So um, maybe the maybe the master bedroom is um, exceptionally large, mm -hmm. and so you have an opportunity. You could create a little um, reading nook. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a that's a lifestyle experience, right? Yeah. A beautiful, comfy chair, um, a lamp with a nice glow, some beautiful mm -hmm. th throw blankets, mm -hmm. a stack of books, maybe a maybe a coffee mug, coffee books and readers from the grocery you know, from the, yeah. the, the gas station, you yes. know, there's a couple bucks. Yeah. Set them on there, some flowers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a throw blanket and a basket of, yeah. of blankets, you know, really creating that lifestyle. Like yeah. this is where you get to relax and read before you get in bed. Right. You know? Um, what about like a gourmet kitchen? I mean, right. maybe something really special about this house is that they have an incredible, you know, Viking range right. flat in the middle of the kitchen. Right. Capitalize on that. Create yeah. a, um, you know, kind of a gourmet feel with um, baskets of specialty products and beautiful cutting boards mm -hmm. and and uh, you know, really play up that kitchen space in a way that makes it feel um, cozy and gives gives the gives the looker an idea of how it would feel to experience living in the space. Yeah. So some other ways that you can play up a kitchen vignette. You know, we we do coffee stations a lot. You know, if you're if if you have the materials to do that, you can. Other ways are you know by using a tray and those like you said those specialty. Um, the spices and the the olive oils with the herbs mm. in it, and you know those those beautiful things and the and the fresh pasta and you know I don't I don't cook so it doesn't do much for me but Jenny does I do <laughs> so she knows more about these yeah. materials than I do but yeah yeah like you know you're you you've got your utensils you, you again you're conveying this lifestyle of luxury so if there is a Viking stove in the kitchen. Yeah. If it were in my kitchen, it wouldn't get absolutely. <laughs> it would stay very clean in it your would kitchen. Be it would still have the stickers on it because I would never take them off. Yes, I would it would. <laughs> <laughs> but if it were in Jenny's kitchen and you needed to play up this gorgeous, uh, this gorgeous appliance, this is a great way to convey that lifestyle to potential buyers. Yes, and you said the word luxury, and I'm glad you did because it made me think. Um, everybody wants a luxury experience, right? right? Um, a nice place to do that is a, is a, a bathroom, specifically, you know, the master uh, bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it has a really beautiful soaking tub. Yeah. Um, play it up with really big, fluffy, new, fresh towels, mm -hmm. and you know, maybe get a bamboo board, you know, that stretches mm -hmm. across the like top of the tub. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a nice rattan um, stool that yeah. you could put with a pair of fluffy you know, white slippers underneath, mm -hmm. you know. What about sea sponges? Yes, You know, yes. you can pick those up at you know, mm -hmm. Home Goods mm -hmm. um, in glass jars yeah. or beautiful soaps, like handmade soaps that you can put into a glass jar. Also smells really good. Yeah. So again, like these are those kind of like, they feel like high-end touches and you're sending that signal to your client. And you know, and, and and these things work not only in like million dollar houses. I mean, I think that they should be the standard when you're staging a million dollar house, mm -hmm. but also when you're staging, you know, two hundred fifty thousand dollar house, that elevates the property, yeah. right? Like, there's no harm in putting really thoughtful touches into the homes that you stage. It matters. It does. So what's another way that you can really g grab the attention of your buyers? Um, let's talk about making the house as functional as possible. Right. And by that I mean um, showing people how they can use one space in a variety of different ways. Like yeah. people need people need their homes to function really, really well. Yeah, yeah. especially these days, right? A lot yeah. of people are working from home. A lot of kids are, are doing school at home. Um, and I think this trend of working from home isn't going anywhere in right. the near future. There are a lot of businesses that are going to strictly online platforms. And so when in terms of, of staging and our responsibility there, mm -hmm. I think you know conveying um, multifunctional spaces, like is there a desk space or should there be a desk space made available 
in a commons area of the house mm -hmm. or in a bonus room? Mm -hmm. You know, is there going to be potentially a parent working from home? Do we need to make a play space that also accommodates young children, but has the, you yeah. know, has the desk space and, you know, the, the, the items that someone would need to function during a work call yeah. um, available to them? Right, right. You know, so many people need workspaces. That's exactly what you're saying in, yeah. in, a, in a home. So, you know, if you're staging a bedroom, you know, maybe as a stager, you think about, you know, what is more important that I show, you know, a dresser in addition to the bed in here, or perhaps you actually set up a really pretty desk work area mm -hmm. to make that bedroom a multi-purpose space. Mm -hmm. um, another thought is the kitchen. Right? The kitchen right. is the heart of the home. This is where all of the living happens. So it's pretty cool if you can show a potential buyer that the kitchen is for cooking and it's also for eating uh -huh. and it's also for um, workstation, uh -huh. you know, work, crafting, crafting. Yeah. yeah. How can you show spaces that, you know, portray to a potential buyer that they can really maximize all of the space in the home mm -hmm. in many, many ways? function in many many ways yeah and these are these are really important trends that we're seeing and, and we need to be able to adapt as stagers as our economy and our culture adapts to what's happening you know yeah. currently okay let's talk about another idea for how to make buyers fall in love with a with a space I think um, this was an idea that you came up with a yeah. long time ago, and and um, we encourage people to do it, and it works so well. You want to tell them about yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, it really doesn't cost anything, and we actually did this when we sold several of our homes, um, and it is by creating a lookbook. And uh, you know, you, your realtor is going to have potentially a notebook with the you know the amenities, and you know when your roof was updated, and and you know facts and information about the home. Um, but in addition to that you can encourage your buyers to write a letter, no, excuse me, your sellers to write a letter to potential buyers that e emotionally helps them feel attached to the home and to the community. The idea is that the person selling the home really is an expert about the home and the neighborhood and probably the community. Mm -hmm. So if they're putting together a book, they have an opportunity to share a wealth of information with people that are coming. And this stuff really matters. Right. Like um, maybe the maybe a potential buyer, um, you know, is a family and mm -hmm. they're curious about whether there are other children in the neighborhood mm -hmm. or whether, you know, you're happy that, with the schools, um, you know, in that zone, yeah. um, you know, yeah. these sorts of things that are really personal yeah. and super valuable information to share with potential buyers. Yeah. So like, say your community has like a super active group of like, you know, young parents or, you know, young people, for example, one neighborhood that we lived in did a 4th of July toddler parade every year. And it was adorable, yeah, you know, cool. like the kids would dress up their bikes in red, white, and blue and have their flags and like, you know, ride their little bikes down the street with all the parents. And it was adorable. And all of the neighbors looked forward to it and they would cheer them on. And so this is something that you would explain yeah. in your, um, in your lookbook, you know, uh, we also have a park nearby where they do bluegrass in the park on the 4th of July. Um, you know, we have a super active community, uh, yeah. and you know, Halloween is a huge deal in in this neighborhood and you know so things like that to get people excited to get people to um to pique their interest about the the people in the community around them and what's available to them yeah and you could really highlight other things that happen like in the community as as a whole right. you know you can talk about um events that happen around holidays and you know, you could um, talk about, you know, maybe this restaurants and this coffee shop that are uh -huh. within walking distance of the uh -huh. property. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the seller's favorite places to go, um, their favorite, you know, community events. There's just a lot of good uh, stuff to share, yeah. um, especially for potential buyers who are coming from out of state or out yeah. of the area. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, like if you were to say like, okay, well the house is located only a mile to the waterfront downtown and only a 10 minute drive to the beach, um, you know, only 10 minutes to the university, you know, all, all, of, the, all of the factors that you can think of that yeah. makes the location of that property appealing. Encourage your sellers 
to document that and to consider writing, you know, a heartfelt letter to potential buyers to see if you can, you know, gain some traction that way. Guys, before we move on, if you will click on the link below and uh, check out our free Pricing for Profits webinar, you can learn the exact formula that we use to price our staging services so that you can get your staging business up and running today. So back to talking about how to make buyers fall in love. We've mm -hmm. spent a lot of time so far talking about the inside of the house. Let's talk for a minute about the outside of the house because it's critical. Yeah, right? We yeah. talk about how, you know, the first few seconds in the door are a really big deal, but the reality is as the potential buyer comes up to the house and their vehicle, that's really their first look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these homeowners may need some suggestions in terms of landscaping and power washing and, and things of that nature. And this is where that consultation checklist mm. comes in handy. Um, we address every one of these details in the consultation, um, the, the items that you print off. You can literally check off the list, like, okay, you need a color, you need to paint the front door this color, you need to power wash your driveway, you need to edge, you need to put mulch in these beds. And then you go back to your trusted vendor list and you make these suggestions to your client, but then you also offer them another solution if they are not physically up for it or they don't have time to do the, the projects, the power washing and the edging, the trimming and the mulching and you know cleaning up beds, then you can also send that, here's, here's, our, um, here's our landscaper who we love and trust, here's a power washer, here's someone who can paint your shutters for you. So you make your suggestions, but you also provide them with a solution and answer. And you know they will appreciate that from you. Yeah, they really will. Um, and again, you know, we scripted out those really difficult conversations because again, you're trying to tell people how to, you know, improve on their property, and you want to do it in a really tactful way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think too, a lot of times as home stagers, we get really hyper focused on what's happening on the inside of the house, mm -hmm. and all of the things that we've discussed about the inside apply to the outside. Cleanliness is mm -hmm. key. Mm -hmm. If stuff looks worn or outdated, it gives the idea to a buyer that the house is worn or that the yeah. house is outdated or that it's going to need a lot of work. Um, so you can do really simple fixes, right? Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned a coat of paint on the front door yeah. and the obvious maintenance, you know, edging and, and fresh mulch and power washing. Mm -hmm. um, and then just a couple of pretty touches as a stager, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, a fresh wreath on the door, right. a new, um, new entry mat, mm -hmm. um, maybe a, a pretty planter. Yeah, simple, yep. simple greenery. touches. Yeah. yeah, all of these things send that message to the buyer that this house is well maintained. And Jenny's right. I mean, you've got to get them into the house and into the front door before you can wow them with your staging skills. Yes. So don't <laughs> neglect the outside. Right. It's very important. It matters. <laughs> you can use our four part consultation checklist to make sure that you are not missing any of these things. Right. And uh, we know because uh, it took us a while when we started out to make sure that we were hitting all of the things. And it's, it's you want to be able to offer the best, most comprehensive service that you can do. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is just a really easy way for you to do it and not, and not sweat the small stuff. Yeah. And not forget things and have to go back and do another site visit. And yeah. you, can, you don't have to spend a half an hour composing an email afterwards of all the things that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. You just check off the list and you hand it to your, your seller right there on the spot. So yeah. it'll make your life go a lot easier. And finally, light is a home stager's superpower. You can use this to your advantage in so many ways, yeah. and it's so stinking important. <laughs> no, oh, critical, right. critical. We say this all the time, light sells homes, and we say that phrase to our clients all the time. It's a good phrase to fall back on, when, especially when you come into a situation where there are super dated drapes, or they're very heavy and dark, and it's detracting from the overall look and feel of the home, you can say, light sells homes. So we're gonna pull these drapes down, we're gonna pull these blinds open, and let in as much light as possible into the space. Yeah. Because one, it feels cleaner, and it feels bigger, and more open, and it photographs way better. So if there's a lamp, we turn it on, so make sure that if, when you're staging a house that all of your lamps have light bulbs in them and that all of the light bulbs are high wattage and similar in terms of um, color. Um, and you know, turn on those lights, turn on those overhead lights, turn on your countertop, you know, under, under, under 
cabinet lighting mm-hmm. in your mm-hmm. in your kitchen. You know, if there's a light bulb, turn it on, even in the closet. Yeah. And when you're bringing your inventory in as the home stager, be really mindful of <clears throat> using lamps to create um, or to bring light into spaces that are maybe not very well lit. Right. Um, you can have <clears throat> the homeowner, you know, replace uh, ceiling bulbs and increase voltage that way. But then you also want to make sure that you're uh, putting uh, lamps on nightstands to create, you know, coziness and ambiance and making sure that end tables have lamps and reading nooks have lamps. Mm-hmm. And if you have areas of the of the home that are just naturally dim, it's your job to figure out how to bring um, light in. And, you know, I think you already said this, first and foremost, the best thing that you can do, and it is critically your job to make sure the natural light is coming in first and foremost. So uncover, uncover the windows, uncover, uncover the, the windows. windows, open, open and mm-hmm. bright and light and mm-hmm. airy. Yeah. 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 It'll make, it'll make everything photograph better. It's critical for open houses and showings that all the lights and all the lamps are on. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a game changer. It really is. So guys, if you like what you heard, give us a like, hit the subscribe button, leave some comments below if you have ideas that you would like us to cover in upcoming videos, or if there's something that we didn't cover in this video that you think is important on your staging day, please let us know. Uh, We are Erin and Jenny with Revisions Mentor, and we'll see you soon.